Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and while you might not be able to see this model tank clearly due to it being solid black plastic, you should be able to just about make out that it's a fairly poor looking one. The reason for that is that it is an FDM 3D print, and on top of that, it's from a very, very many year old printer that's rattling itself to bits. The 3D model it's printed from is actually a really good one. It is the Cromwell from Wargame 3D that they sent over a little while ago for me to have a look at. My resin printed tank of the same model came out really nicely, and I did print off one with FDM just to see how it would work. Now recently I kind of noticed it on the shelf and had the good idea that I could clean it up a little bit, paint it and get it into just about usable condition to play a few games of bolt action with. However, I know full well that the amount of effort required to make this look really good, well, that amount of effort is the same as me just making another one with the resin printer again. Or even just buying a proper model kit of a Cromwell. So instead of going to the great amount of effort to make this look really good, I'll go the opposite direction and put in the minimum amount of effort, something I've gotten good at in my old age, to clean it up just a little and just enough so that it'll seem fine from gaming distance, that arm's length view. The first step along that line here, as you've seen me doing on screen here, is to layer on some solvent onto the surface. And this is a technique that I like to use for cleaning up FDM prints. And what it does is melt the plastic and helps fuse the layers together. It doesn't remove them entirely, but it does smooth them out a little. Now, usually if I was going to go to more effort, I'd let this fully dry and then I'd sand all of the armor panels flat. And maybe I would go back in and resin print like some hatches and stuff to glue back on if those had been removed. But all of that is going to be skipped this time. And priming the model now will give you a better idea of what I'm working with. And you can see all around the model, but especially on the turret, the layer lines, the steps, but also there are smaller lines and splotches from the end of each extruded line as my printer can't really handle retraction properly. The technical stuff isn't important, but at this step I did go around and try and remove the worst of these defects that still existed after the solvent, now that they're clearly visible because of the primer. To get started with the painting, I'll use the airbrush just because it's quick. I still don't know how to use an airbrush properly, and I certainly don't mind ruining this model practicing. Firstly, a nice solid coat of some dark military green, a classic British paint scheme for this classic British tank. Especially as all of my British vehicles have more of a desert theme so far, the green seems suitable. To practice a little bit more detailed spraying than just a base coat, I mixed in some black and went around the panels of the model, leaning towards the modulation technique that I have talked about a lot on other videos recently. This came out well, but not great, and that's fine because that's not the point of the model. Another technique that I've used a lot simply because this is sort of how I paint vehicles these days is stippling. And I'm just throwing some patches and splotches of black and brown and grey with a touch of metallic silver over the top so that it looks damaged and have rusty, dirty edges of metal panelling. It's not an entirely realistic scheme, but it's emotive of the type of well-damaged and dirty tank, and that's just what I need. Bonus points for being a quick and very easy technique to use. But while I was doing this, I had another thought. I've seen it mentioned that there are certain modeling techniques, especially weathering, that cover up a lot of detail. And I've seen people talk about not wanting to use these techniques as you lose the detail of a very nicely detailed model that you've bought. But in this case, there's not actually that much nice detail to cover up. And so it's perfectly fine to completely cover the model with mud or, in this case, this cheesecloth that I've had for a little while. I've been meaning to try and make some camo netting with it. And I can actually use pieces of this to cover the worst parts of the 3D print. So I cut some strips out, scrunched them up with some PVA glue and brown craft paint, and laid them over the tank. And this was 
difficult, very annoying, and they just kept shifting around. I tried dotting some super glue underneath the camo netting, which did help, but it also faded the colour of the netting, as you'll see later on once it's dried. And then I made another lot of PVA glue. This time I replaced the camo netting with flour, as this makes up some great lumpy mud texture. And you can probably see why I don't use this camera angle much. The lighting, my hand in the way, it's all very poor footage, but it's all I've got now. Essentially what I'm doing is using these modeling techniques that cover a lot of the model to do exactly that, to cover a lot of the model and hide the poor detail and the artifacting of the 3D print. As this is all PVA, it took a while to dry, and once it was finally dry, I had a look over it. I realized I wanted to change the color of the camo netting so they don't just look solidly the same, kind of very similar color to the mud as well. And I tend to dry brush mud with something, and usually that's going to be a lighter brown, and that's what I will do eventually. But if I'm going lighter for the mud, why not darker for the camo netting? Straight from the bottle, like the riffraff that I am, just some spots of brown wash at first. But to add some variety, I also emptied the last of my black wash as well in just some spots around the camo netting. I did quite enjoy how the wash seems to sit in a bubble on the surface for just a moment before suddenly soaking into the mesh. I could, of course, spend a lot longer, add some more details, paint better, weather more, but I think this just about hits the spot of being just about good enough for very little work. Taking a pretty poor FDM print and turning it into a usable gaming model was quite an interesting challenge. Sort of a challenge, it's more of a challenge to not do more because I always wanted to do more and to take it to the next level with more effort. But what do you guys think? How does it suit the gaming table? How does it suit being a kind of poor looking vehicle in comparison to the much nicer resin printed version? And maybe it'll just sit at the very back of a shelf behind other nicer looking models. But still, I like it and that's all I have to say, so I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.